What's going on, everybody? It's Elder Jacoby Owens coming to you August Tuesday, Tuesday, August 18th for Testimony Tuesday. All right, and the testimony I want to share is a brief testimony, but it's also going to be coupled with another testimony that I heard just today. All right, I'll start with the shorter one. Um, so my cousin was telling me that, and a cousin of ours that apparently I have not met, um, we were talking about our kids and how they do crazy things. So there was this uh, drunk guy outside the house, like a neighborhood drunk guy, and he's yelling at him, he's talking about, hey, kids in the window or whatever, kids in the window. And um, so they paying him no mind, cussing at him, fussing at him, um, you know, ignoring him like he's crazy, he's seeing things or whatever. My cousin had no idea that it was her kid in the window that he was talking about. And the next thing you know, this kid fell out of the second story window. Because what my son does too is he climbs up in the window, Mission Impossible style, you know, and just like scales the wall. You know, almost like a mom, right? So uh, her son fell out the window and out of the second story and um, hit the ground. Boom. But he just gets up and walks back in the house like nothing happened. You know, and um, truly that's a testimony, that's a blessing. Because um, the Lord, he looks out for us when we can't look out for ourselves. And we Sometimes we just don't know any better. Um, he'll really look out for us. You know, he'll really take care of us and provide for us. So that's a blessing. I'm just glad that heard that testimony today. Because, um, again, it just reminds you, it keeps you... Uh, keeps you knowing that everything's in God's hands. He fell out of the window, but he didn't break a bone. He didn't break his neck. He didn't get hurt. He got up, walk, he walk, came back in the house. This kid is like two, three years old. All right. Other testimony I want to share today. Um, I was having some tire problems, and I take my car to this little hole in the wall garage that just does the used, um, that does the used tires. And, um, you know, we get everything situated. I got the price. He get all the ties on, and I see him putting the lugs on. So, I'm, you know, I'm waiting outside, just walking back and forth, whatever. And uh, you know, some other guy had come to the shop or whatever, and there was only enough space for two cars to get there and get worked on. So this other guy comes, and he's dealing with both of us, but he's really working on my car, but he's dealing with him too. And so eventually, he's like, "All right, ready to go." So, um. Hey, the man, I walk around, I look at the tires, I check the tires out, everything looks good to me. And so I get in the car, and I pull out into the street, and I start driving, and I look on the uh, dashboard, and um, right in the console area where you see the speedometer, your messages come up. And uh, it's, it was showing that the inflation of my tires was, was low. So I, I, I pull out, but then I just back right back up in, and I'm like, hey, look, uh, my inflation is low. It's saying it's reading low, so I'm get you checking one more time. So he goes around, he checks all the air pressure. He's down there with the tires. He's checking the air pressure. And um, he checked everything's good. And he's like, you know, sometimes it needs to drive a little bit before it, it registers. I'm like, okay, fine. So um, when I first had noticed the air was low, I had stuck my head out the window and I noticed my, my tire was like, wobbling a little bit so I'm like maybe it's because it's a low air pressure or whatever so I uh second time around I get in start driving down the street and I'm riding Ace Ventura style looking out the window looking at the tire and um as I'm looking at the tire it's still wobbling I'm like why is it wobbling air pressure says it's good why is it wobbling so I'm driving slow normally I'd have peeled out of that bad boy and, and went on went on around the way because I was right around the corner from my house not too far and so um it's wobbling still. I'm like, why is it wobbling? So I'm not driving as fast as I normally would. So um, I get down maybe five, six blocks away from the shop. Then I have a <laughs> or whatever. And so I stop. I'm able to pull over. I stop the car. Get out. My front driver's side tire had no lugs on it at all. The lock, none of the regular lugs. It was completely off of the tire. And um. So, I'm a little upset. I'm a little frustrated. I just had a long day at work, and I wanted to come home and uh, do what I had to do. But now I'm here dealing with this. So, I had to walk back up there, tell him about the, what's going on. Then he had to drive back down, work on it and everything. And um, we couldn't find the lugs, the original lugs that came off the tire. 
for whatever reason they were gone you know um but i'm thankful because that situation could have been a lot worse i could have pulled out in the traffic not even had paid attention to the speedometer or been looking out the window checking my tire and i could have uh a lot of things could have happened. My tire could have rolled off in the oncoming traffic, caused someone to hurt themselves, kill themselves, or um, I could have gotten into a bad accident myself, you know. And I know a few police officers, and um, I know life is fragile. You know, if you don't even have to know uh, the things that some people deal with, you know. Um, just in our everyday lives, we know that life is fragile, you know. And um, that could have turned out to be a very bad day for a few people. But... I was able to go back and he was able to take care of it. But I also I'm noticing as I'm dealing with this guy, um, I it's like in my mind, I'm like, why am I not madder than I am right now? Because, you know, I was already having a frustrating day, but I'm like, why am I not madder than I am? How, why am I not handling this a little bit more aggressively <laughs> than I'm actually handling it? You know, and um. And I know truly when it talks about God will keep us from all evil. And it's not necessarily evil that comes from around us. It could be our own, our own flesh, you know, because of a, a little a few years ago, it would have been a, it would have been a different situation. You know, um, it would have been a different situation. But I thank God for keeping me not only physically, but keeping me spiritually as well. And lo and behold, the guy at the tire shop that was working on the tires, he was a brother in Christ, you know. Um, and I kind of start drawing the conclusions when I'm in the shop and it had a pitch about customers be patient and and something about waiting on God and something like that. And then when he uh, when uh, I came back up, of course I had the scowl on my face. When I came back up and I told him about what happened, he's like, oh, Jehovah. <laughs> You know, African guy, and I, I like to do voices when I make other people talk, so you can tell the difference. But uh, I do it with everybody, so I hope I didn't offend nobody with that. But uh, you know, I'm just thankful, you know, because he kept me, he kept my my fit, kept me physically, spiritually, and he kept me from offending one of his little ones as well, because I didn't go and handle him aggressively. I didn't come at him out of the way, you know. So I just thank the Lord because the situation could have been a lot different. You know, and that's just, that's my testimony. Both of those are the testimony for today. So prayerfully, it's been a blessing to you as it has to me. Till next time, I'm out of time. Be blessed.